I'm now walking just next to the houses. Uh, trucks passing by which are collecting uh, coal from the mine. We are here in Whitbank, MNS area, to observe their problems of water and dust from the nearby coal mine. The area was situated in the 1980s and they are still struggling to get clean water. The coal mine is just a few meters from their homes. One of the residents here in MNS is Lindy Wesambo. In 2009, Lindiwe says the water problem in MNA started in 2009, whereby they used a tap from the mine, and that's where they noticed the oily water in their buckets and it was also brownish in color. The family of Lindy Wesambo started living in MNS in the 1990s after they were moved from where the mine is mining currently. In Kenya, I to a MNS, a man's way to a failure, a man's a swapoos like a camgang up a mine, and our seeking sometimes is not not swapoos, a market new way to have a plume. Lindiwe tells us that the water is very dirty in a way that when they drink it without boiling it first, their kidneys become painful and they get diarrhea. Especially the kids get more sick because they just drink the water without adult supervision. And in Abantuana, Abantuana ba apuza sometimes ba ya tulu la ba ya kuta isisuza boziba lose. For years, the community of MNS have been struggling to get hold of the Emalahleni municipality mayor to resolve their problems. But nothing has happened, and instead of taking them to court like the neighboring area, Carolina, they decided to forcefully kidnap the mayor of Emalahleni to MNS to see and experience the problems they encounter in their everyday life. The outcome of the whole situation was that the mayor made promises that are still in negotiations. Meanwhile, the Benchmarks Foundation made a call report and David Van Veig is the main researcher of the report, working hand in hand with the community monitors. What should the people from those areas expect once everything is finalized? Well, I think the Benchmarks Foundation wants the monitors to identify with the issues that are raised in the report, and then we've got to take on the mining companies in terms of their grievance mechanisms. We've got to lodge with each mine, BHP Billiton and with Anglo, a series of grievances that the community have regarding the operation of the mine, and then to see whether those grievance mechanisms in fact work. And if they don't work, then we've got to begin to suggest alternative ways of solving the problems to the government, to the mining companies, and also to the communities. So there will be a number of steps that will be taken to take the issue forward so that we can see if we can bring about change in what is happening in that area. The dust, it's so black. This place, it's so dusty. The communities are living just close to the road and close to the mine. In Pumalanga, MNS, the discussions with the mining company and the municipality is still ongoing, and the mine is shifting the blame to the municipality, says Lindy Wesambo. This is a Benchmarks Foundation podcast made by Susan Morawa and Matthews Shavani.